Farming is what changed civilizations from nomadic hunter-gatherers to stable farmers with a secure food income. The idea at the time was probably as revolutionary as the discovery of the wheel. Agriculture began in the Fertile Crescent 11,000 years ago, and since that time, the industry has seen growth which has taken it to the point of today where farming is becoming an industry and is worth a large chunk of GDP. These days, farming is mechanized, scientific, and automated to a large degree. Then there are smaller farms who do things differently, but what do successful farmers have in common? We found out. This is what successful farmers have in common. But before we get into today's video, don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe to our channel, as well as clicking on that post notification bell so you're always kept up to date with the latest and greatest videos we put out. The Birth of Farming Did you know that the history of agriculture records the domestication of plants and animals and the development and dissemination of techniques for raising them productively? Agriculture began independently in different parts of the globe and includes a diverse range of taxa. At least 11 separate regions of the old and new world were involved as independent centers of origin. Wild grains were collected and eaten from at least 105,000 years ago. However, domestication did not occur until much later. Starting from around 9,500 BC, the eight Neolithic founder crops, emmer wheat, inkhorn wheat, hurled barley, peas, lentils, bitter vetch, chickpeas, and flax were cultivated in the Levant. Pigs were domesticated in Mesopotamia around 11,000 BC, followed by sheep between 11,000 and 9,000 BC. Cattle were then domesticated from the wild Oroches in the areas of modern Turkey and India around 8,500 BC. Sugarcane and some root vegetables were domesticated in New Guinea around 7,000 BC. In the Andes of South America, the potato was domesticated between 8 and 5,000 BC, along with beans, cocoa, llamas, alpacas, and guinea pigs. In Mesopotamia, wild tezanite was domesticated to maize by 4000 BC. Cotton was domesticated in Peru by 3600 BC. Camels were domesticated late, perhaps around 3000 BC. And lastly, in Australia, agriculture was invented at a currently unspecified period with the oldest eel traps of Bouge Bim dating back to 6600 BC. So, what do successful farmers have in common? Farming success is the ability to grow crops and process animal products continuously. We found that successful farmers have the following in common. Knowledge. You can't do anything and expect to make money unless you have knowledge, the exception being those with talent in certain areas. But even greater singers who have singing talent can go their entire lives without being noticed, like how the British singer Susan Boyle went unnoticed. You might have a green thumb, but you still need to know what you're doing. Farmers with little knowledge starting off farming make mistakes and learn, but if you went to an agricultural school, you already know a lot more than someone who's only read books. Reading books is another good option, but the practice of farming is different to the theory of farming. Even after you've devoured an entirely small library, you still have to be able to help a farm animal give birth or pay the vet bill. The other important factor is to stay on top of new farming techniques. In other words, reading a lot even after your farm is settled. But don't just read anything. Read periodicals with the latest advances in farming, and if there are more successful farmers than yourself in the community, look at what they're doing differently. Diversification In the agricultural context, diversification can be regarded as the reallocation of some of a farm's productive resources, like land, capital, farm equipment, and labor to other products and, particularly in richer countries, non-farming activities like restaurants and shops. Farmers will have various reasons as to why they will diversify, be it from reducing risk, responding to changing consumer demands or changing government policy, responding to external shocks, and more recently, as a consequence of climate change. When you buy anything with which to farm with, be it the implementation or machines or the animals or seeds, you are investing your money. Any investor worth his salt will tell you that diversification is key to success. You wouldn't invest all your money at one stock, would you? The main difference with diversification in farming and in areas like investing in stocks, is that it's going to require more labor strictly in the farming sense, unless you have a roadside farm shop or a private landing strip, or you have access to water that you can provide, sell, or trade to neighboring farms. Even with diversification, you still need to focus on the type of farming with the biggest chance of success in the area. Self-discipline Nothing great in life comes to those without self-discipline. 
Farming means getting eyes on the ground as early as possible every single day to focus on areas that need your intervention and then to still get to your daily routines, like mending fences, fixing broken water pipes, helping a sick or injured animal, and then still getting to your daily to-do list. You need to be able to get out there on your farm as early as possible and see what's happening and you have to be able to stick to your routine, which should be a planned routine by the way. Here's a good technique. You want to do 80% of the day's work with 20% effort and you want to get it done before lunch. Then after lunch, focus on the 20% that must still get done but needs 80% effort. This is just an example, but the 80-20 principle has been proven to work in many industries. The point is that you need to have a routine and stick to it. Climate change. In the last surprise ice storm in Iowa, farmers had massive losses in terms of crops, bees, but most importantly, livestock. If scientists are right, we are bound to see more and more severe and unexpected weather due to climate change. To be able to be prepared for a more severe weather condition is not a waste of resources because, even if scientists are wrong, severe weather will always be around as a natural occurrence. As well as protection for livestock against sudden cold conditions, there are other factors to consider when it comes to the change in climate, be it natural or man-made. Other issues are longer and more extensive droughts, which are going to require farmers to provide water and sustenance to their livestock and irrigation for the crops. Shelter for livestock can be as simple as lean-tos to protect them against wind chill and allow more to survive. Shelter for crops would be in the form of greenhouses, but obviously, this would only work for hand-picked crops, unless you can afford the newest robotic picking innovations. Successful farmers always prepare for the worst. There's nothing wrong with having plans to handle emergency weather conditions. In the end, you're investing in protecting your initial investment. Think of it as hedging, lowering the risk of losing your investment. Physical and mental ability. If you are past the prime of your life and beginning to have physical issues, farming might not be for you. It's back-breaking work and does take a toll on your body, not to mention the injuries that you may or may not add up over the years. Having a reliable foreman is an option, but such a person would need decent compensation and some stake in the land if they're true farmers. The less you are able to get hands-on farming, the more that you'll have to rely on your foreman and you will have to pay him well, which means another massive overhead charge. So unless you're a career soldier at some stage or had been doing hard manual labor for most of your life, or unless you are young, stay away from even starting a farm. If your health gives in, then everything stops, or more money has to go into paying salaries for people to work for you. Also, consider mental ability. If you're a forgetful person or have anger issues, then life on a farm will also become more challenging than for people who are focused. This ties in with self-discipline as mentioned earlier. Mentally tough people can do what they want to in order to change their situation or make a success of any industry. Industry. Business plan. While the agricultural side is a little different from your typical and traditional companies, it's still a genuine business and does need to be treated as such. If you want to become a successful farmer, then you do need to have a business plan. And in fact, you need to have a solid business plan if you want to get the wheels spinning and off the ground in the right way. The plan needs to include details about every single facet of the prospective farming business. It's not something that's just going to take a couple hours to complete, but rather something that will need to be worked on for quite some time. You don't just figure everything out in a couple of days. A lot of research and learning will need to take place before you start anything. Your plan is going to be your Bible in a way. You'll follow along with it throughout every single step and stage of the business life. And you'll also plan accordingly to convince companies and individuals alike to invest within your project. If you head into, let's say, a bank with truly little preparation in terms of a plan and presentation, then you're not going to have much joy in terms of securing loans. An all right and convincing plan could sway somebody into injecting capital in your business. It could be the difference between a modest yield and prosperity. The other part of planning is to be able to have an actual plan with a budget for your year and even plan for the medium term. The plan will be your guide and help you easily determine where to add and where to cut. With no plan, you cannot see the whole picture clearly enough to make effective adjustments. These are just a couple of the things that make effective farmers. Everything in life starts in the mind and then everything else flows from that. What are your feelings about the points that are made in this video? Do you agree with any of them and are there any things that we left out? Please let us know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, we hope to see you next time, and if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ding that notification bell for more content just like this.